Hey YouTube, another video of the ZL1 here. And today I wanted to real briefly chat about why I ended up getting this particular vehicle. Um, really, I had my heart, my heart set on getting a GT350. Um, hopefully a yeah, GT350R, really. But you know, the whole back seat thing was kind of killing me a little bit with the, the GT350R. So, I mean, that turned out to be a reason why I, I veered away from it. Um, but just a GT350 was the primary target. Not to mention it, it match matched the Ford Raptor a little bit. So really uh, what I ended up doing, I just kind of drove by a Chevy dealership, which is always always a bad idea, right? I'm driving by looking at a showroom and I saw this parked right next to a another ZL1, well, two other ZL1s and one other black one, normal black one like this. And then the other one was a, a black ZL1 1LE. And they're all right there on the showroom floor, of course, looking beautiful and majestic. So I caught my eye and I went and checked it out. Ended up just kind of poking around a little bit, uh, sat in it. I did not think I was going to like the interior at all. But then again, I didn't know I didn't know much about the sixth generation Camaro. Uh, I didn't do any homework on it. wasn't a primary target, like I mentioned. But I, when I sat in it and I looked around and just kind of got a feel for it, fired it up. Like it sounded, sounded great. The interior really blew me away. I was not expecting a Camaro, a GM product, uh, to kind of to I don't know to look that good and feel that nice. So that was a that was definitely a component of it, the, the interior. But but still, admittedly, a part of me does kind of wonder, hey, should I have gotten the GT350? Um, I think obviously the GT350 has a more of a more of a following right now, so it's definitely more popular. So when I put this video up, I mean, there will be, I imagine, a lot of people, a lot of people saying, hey, you should have got a GT350. And, and I don't blame them because it, it really is a, a fantastic car. Everyone always leverages it for the sound. You know, they're always like, oh, it sounds amazing. You can't beat that sound. I agree. I think, I think the GT350 sounds phenomenal, but I feel like <laughs> this is really, really close. So I, I do think the GT350 sounds better. How many times am I going to say GT350 in this video? Oh my gosh. But uh, I do think it sounds better than, than the Camaro here. But that's it, really. Um, I think on all other facets, minus, maybe minus the back end, uh, the Camaro has the Mustang beat. The interior is superior, in my opinion. Uh, the front end, a lot more vicious in the, in the ZL1. Uh, the wheels look better on the ZL1. Uh, the lower side skirts extended out. That looks better. In my again, this is all my opinion. Um, and I really love the the carbon fiber exposed weave here on the on the on the hood. I think that looks fantastic. And of course, I'll do a closer look here in a second. I'm trying to avoid the wind as always by staying kind of tucked in the garage. Um, what else though? And obviously, most importantly, I should have said this first. You know, the power. So this car performs much better than the GT350 and 350R. Much better. So you got more horsepower, 650. I, I, again, don't quote me on the much better, of course. I understand they're, they're still close, um, but this is better uh, between the two. Um, the magnetic rise suspension is phenomenal in this. The um, Although the 1LE, of course, is better for track, just not for daily use, in my opinion. The one thing that does kind of is kind of killing me a little bit is the potential resale factor. So, if you know the GT350 at all, you know those things are extremely popular and they're holding the value very well. I'll show you that hood. I think this looks great. It's functional. So, admittedly, I've always been very, very calculated with all of my car purchases, my motorcycle purchases, you know, anything, anything, a large purchase, I've been pretty calculated with it and admittedly overthink it, overthought it. This, like I, like I just mentioned, just kind of drove by a Chevy dealership and checked it out and, and fell in love with it. You know, within a week I had one, I had it. So this one was a little bit more of a, of a, I don't know. Word I'm looking for a little bit more of a purchased on a whim, if you will. Um, but and because of that reason, I am a little nervous just because I know the GT350R in particular. 
together would have held value a lot better over the next few years. But, I mean, in your guys' opinion, is that enough reason? Excuse me, I'm right now. <laughs> Can I talk back up in here? Is that enough reason to have gone with the GT350R? You know, I think you can't go wrong with either vehicle, of course, but I don't know. I think obviously resale makes it a lot better. But someone had mentioned on a on a forum post, I'm like, since when do we only buy cars and rate cars on on the fact of, of the resale? You know, and obviously that's not the only reason why people would get a GT 350, but you know, it's a it is a driving factor of the the exclusiveness of the of the R in particular. Yeah, safe to say when I went in there and of course underneath the, the showroom lights, the this riverside blue definitely popped and caught my attention. So here I'll step inside too real quick. So definitely not ideal for a toddler, but it does work if you want to try to enjoy a enjoy a Camaro with your family. It is possible. Not to mention we will have another car seat right there soon enough here in uh, about a month or so. So I did think, excuse me, it's a little dirty, but having sat in both this and, and a GT350 and GT, GT350R, same thing pretty much. I, in my personal opinion, I think Camaros did it better, Chevy did it better. What do you guys think? Granted, it is a little dirty, but just the overall feel it definitely felt like, you know, it felt like a $65,000 car. And sunroof. I'll fire it up real quick. not far off from the GT350. One thing I thought was pretty cool is this right here. So right now it's in standard mode. We just see obviously normally what you see in a rear view mirror. Then you get that. That is, you know, obviously from the camera on the rear bumper. So again, you know, I didn't know that this car had that, and I know it's pretty probably becoming pretty standard nowadays. But I thought that was pretty neat, especially with the low visibility in this thing as it is. It definitely helps out tremendously. Yeah. Well, there you have it, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Let me know if any you want to watch anything in particular. I'm happy to happy to share.